Hi, we're reading The Thing About Oliver and we're up to the very last chapter 24. I'm laying on the floor of my bedroom. Afternoon sun flickers through the stained glass window. I'm in my swimmers, but I've got my school shoes on too. I've been wearing them in so I don't get blisters when school starts. They aren't even rubbing my heels anymore. The window is throwing colourful patterns onto the carpet. It's easy to imagine I'm underwater, surrounded by colourful fish and coral, but soon I won't need to imagine. This Saturday we're catching a boat to Rainbow Island. Aunt Janine is going to teach me how to snorkel right off the beach. It turns out she used to snorkel a lot. She even has her own mask and flippers. Ollie can paddle in the water with Patrick and Mum's promised to take the camera so she can snap lots of photos of us all. I can't wait to send the photos to Helen. She sent me an email yesterday with some photos of my neon Tatras. There are 23 of them now. I guess they weren't girls after all. Luckily, Helen managed to scoop the babies out and put them in a separate container before their parents ate them. There's a knock at the door and Mum pokes her head in. How was work? I ask her. Great, darling. Mum sits down on the floor beside me. I think she likes her new job. She doesn't look tired anymore now that Ollie is sleeping better. It must be all the exercise we've been getting at the pool. How's your drawings going? Good, I push my new blue journal across and show Mum the page I've been working on. It's a reef scene. Mum leans in for a closer look. That's a pretty one. She points to a striped fish with spikes that stick out in all directions. That's a Petaurus boliense, or lionfish, I tell her, also known as feather fins, firefish, zebra fish, turkey fish, or scorpion cod. Wow, mum looks impressed. And those two? That's a clownfish, and that's a sea enemy. I remind her. I explain how the two of them have a special relationship. They depend on each other. Mum looks at some and smiles. I can hear Ollie in the kitchen, screeching with delight. Aunt Janine must be feeding him mango. Mum's cheek checks her watch. I better go get him ready for speech. Now that Mum finishes work at three, she can take Ollie to speech therapy after school. That means no more therapy on weekends. It also means I don't have to go with them because Aunt Janine is here. Mum even got me a bike, so I'll be able to ride from school with Eve ride to and from school with Eve, the girl with the red braid who lives across the road. She's been at the pool almost every day too. We're going to be in the same class. Are you still riding to the pool with Eve? I nod. Mum helps me pack up my books which are spread out across the floor. When our neighbours heard what happened to my old books, they donated so many books about oceans and marine life and reef, Aunt Janine doesn't have enough shelf space to fit them all. Mum waits while I throw a dress over my swimmers and lock my bedroom door. Then we head down the hall together. I can hear hip hop music coming from the kitchen. Patrick told Aunt Janine that since Oliver likes beatboxing, he might also like the sound of hip hop. He, he was right. Ollie loves it. He even tries to copy the sound. Sarah, his new speech therapist, says it's excellent for his speech development. Now we play nothing but hip hop. It beats listening to toddler music any day. I dance across to the fridge and stop. Mum has put up a new photo right beside the old one of us washing the dishes. Ollie and I are lying on our bellies in the pool, looking like a pair of freshwater crocodiles. I'm looking right at the camera. Ollie isn't, of course. Both of us are laughing. I look from one photo to the other. So much has happened since the first photo was taken. My hair looks lighter now. My arms and legs are browner. Ollie looks different too. Have you got sunscreen on? Mum asked me. It's hot out there. Yes. I take a juice box from the fridge and then grab another one for Eve. Take a bottle of water too, she adds. Ta-ta, Oliver reminds me. I grin at him. Don't worry, Ollie, I will. I tuck a bottle of water under my arm and kiss the top of his head. Then I turn to Aunt Janine in surprise. Are those toast crumbs in his hair? Aunt Janine gives me a wink. I can't believe it. First mango and now toast. What next? Vegemite? I never thought I'd see a little monkey eat anything but yogurt and mashed bananas. But that's the thing about Oliver lately. He's full of surprises. Where's your helmet, Tilly? My mouth suddenly. I throw the water bottle and juice boxes into my backpack. In the shed. And before you ask, 
I'll be sure to wear it properly. I grinned at Aunt Janine, kissed Mum on the cheek and slinged my backpack over my shoulder. Make sure you ride on the footpath. Mum follows me to the door and watch out for the driveways. Okay. I jogged down the front steps. The owl hoots as I stepped down to pick up a fallen branch of any pat flower. I hold it to my nose and inhale deeply before tucking it behind my ear. Its warm, sweet smell is so familiar to me now. Oh, and Tilly, Mum calls from the veranda. I turn around and roll my eyes in mock exaggeration. Exaggeration. Yes, Mum smiles and blows me a kiss. Have a good swim. And that's the end of the thing about Oliver. Okay, there's lots of fantastic messages in this book and I think it's really good. One is, I love the way they keep saying think positive. Because when you think positive, you um, portray positive energy. And I think things end up a lot happier and you have a lot more confidence to do things. So that's one thing. And positivity is really important. So remember that. The other thing is there's many children diagnosed with autism um, these days. And I think it's important that we have books like this that um, children and other people can relate to what can happen in these um, situations. And it just gives us a little bit of an insight. But with this book, I think it fosters tolerance and acceptance of difference. And I know, and def, um, and I know in families, there's a lot of um, diversity sometimes. So it's a book about family relationships and learning how to cope with change. And I think that's one major theme that all children, whether you have someone who has a disability in your family or not, can relate to. Because um, I know with a lot of us, we might have to move house, start new schools, um, just different things. The other big thing I got out of that book, which I relate to myself, is sometimes when something happens that's quite big in your life, it makes you reevaluate and think about things and think about things that are really important that maybe you've forgotten about. And for this case, Tilly was so focused on um, wanting to be that marine biologist and feeling, you know, that she, Oliver was such a pain that when he got lost, she actually realised he was the most important thing. And I think I can relate to that because in my own personal way, um, just just um, when I got a little bit sick, um, you know, the things, I changed my thinking and what matters to me the most. And I think you'll be able to relate to this book in many ways, whether it's with friends or whatever. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I think it's a fantastic one and I wonder whether it will win. We'll have to wait until about October or November to see now. Okay, have a great day. Bye.